Okay? Right. Let me explain what is the big challenge in terms of forestry. So this country is basically going to be transformed profoundly in terms of uh, woodland cover. I mean, it's going to be, if, if the plans go ahead, it will be a massive transformation of the, of the land use in this country. The plans are very ambitious, and there is a lot of, we, we, we need a lot of data to be sure that we are moving in the right direction. Not only to create uh, an, an inventory data, uh, uh, a synoptic view of the situation of the country now, but also we should have the capability to project what the situation is likely to be in 5, 10, 20, 100 years' time. And we need to monitor continuously, we need additional data to monitor whether we are departing from our expectations in terms of the use of models, or we are going in the, into the opposite direction or, or completely wrong. So when you are trying to plant a lot of trees in, in, a, in an area or in this country, you need to start by, by knowing what you've got now. You need a good inventory. We have a national uh, forest inventory. We have uh, very good information about the public land, but uh, very partial information about the private land. And we don't have information about uh, trees outside woodlands, areas that are less than uh, half a hectare, okay? So there is a lot of uh, trees in there, there's a lot of variability, and basically, and sadly, is uh, mostly unmanaged uh, woodlands. So we need to know the location and its condition. So forest health is one of the big issues in this country. I don't know why, but uh, Britain seems to be like the meeting point of all the bugs that are occurring in the planet. One way or the other, we'll end up in here, and uh, we need to do something about it. One of the things, one of the vital uh, things we need to do is to early detect uh, the, the spread of this disease, the onset of this disease. Because when we detect symptomatic trees, it's probably too late, okay? And our, um, our containment uh, measures are not going to be very effective. So as I say, we need to, to use information to for forecast uh, the future and adapt our predictions with uh, new data. Especially, you, you will see later on, if I've got the time to do my presentations, all our models, all the models we've been developing in the Forest Commission for many years are for monoculture, even age plantations. Now there's a big uh, process of transformation of mixed woodlands, natural regeneration, continuous cover forestry, and those models don't work at all in those, in those situations. As the proportion of the forest uh, in, the, in, the, in this new context is increasing, we need to try to substitute uh, modeling by direct observation and establish some trends in between observations as a, as a temporary shortcut, okay? So the question is what kind of data we need, uh, how frequently and how it's going to be processed. What is the level of expertise we have in the country? What, uh, how, how, how rapidly we can, we can produce this data? And, um, and who is going to use that. So we're talking about analysis-ready data. I prefer to talk about uh, useful data. What, what is useful data? Well, data that is reliable, data that is understood, and data that can be delivered relatively quickly and is available. In terms of knowledge about remote sensing products, uh, cartography derived from uh, spatial, spatial cartography derived from, uh, from the remote sensing, well, you can imagine this is like a big uh, train, okay, with many wagons. We have uh, wagons with uh, people that uh, know programming, they know remote sensing, they know images very well, they, they are working with this data, and then you've got uh, this level of knowledge is decreasing towards the very end, and you have a lot of foresters in this country who don't know anything about remote sensing, or know very little. And they don't know what to do with this data, and they don't know where to, to get it, okay? So this is an important consideration. <clears throat> We've got uh, different programs. One is uh, to monitor uh, forest health, uh, one is uh, forest inventory, different levels, uh, tactical, operational, uh, strategic. We've got, uh, we're try trying to develop um, a drone program. We are, we are trying to develop our own capability to collect data at will 
over relatively uh, small areas, but uh, they, 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 are, they, are, they are much bigger than the traditional plots we're measuring in the field. Okay. I'm going to talk very briefly because of lack of time about uh, what we're doing here with the LiDAR. We have uh, different levels of processing. This is done automatically. And we are using the national LiDAR surveys in England and Wales. Scotland is data from archive because they don't have a, a LiDAR program yet. They say it's going to be soon, but they, they, they don't have it yet. The, the quality of the data is one, two points per square meter, if we're talking about England. Wales is uh, much better, it's between four to eight, nine, okay? This is a national program. That uh, gives us the possibility to uh, produce estimates uh, almost at a stand level, or, or well, almost no, at a super stand level. We can go below the, the, the stand boundaries and show the variability within, the, within a forest stand. Some of the data we are capturing in the, in, the, in the forest districts now, they are 40 to 90 points per square meter. And in, in areas like Fairford Forest, we got above 100 points per square meter. So you have, you, you, you have the possibility to see absolutely everything at a high level of detail, but it's a massive data set that you need to, to process, okay? So talking about supercomputers, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, well, automating processes. Right, well, this is a, an example of uh, the different cartographic products you can get uh, to describe the, the terrain, how to describe the, 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 the properties of, uh, of, uh, of the canopy. You see that this, I mean, for example, you can compare to the right what would be in the subcompartment database, a flat polygon associated to a, a database, spatial database, okay? where one of the fields will be the yield class, the productivity of that area. If you look at the same polygons out with uh, the yield class generated by LIDAR, you see the spatial variability. And all, we all know that by visiting the field. There are some areas that are more productive within the same stand, and other areas are less productive, or have been affected by wind damage, by thinning, by whatever, okay? So it's not the same. So how to integrate this complexity into something that is already quite simple in the subcompartment database uh, in a way that people can understand and take uh, sensible decisions about it is, is challenging, okay? It's challenging. Right. In terms of uh, production forecast and uh, how we can use LIDAR to estimate future productions, we, 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 know the, we know the age, at least in the public land, we know the age and we, we know the, the species, so we can estimate uh, from LIDAR a yield class model that we can use to project the characteristics of that, that crop in a few years' time, okay? We can uh, add some modifiers by detecting, for example, wind damage. This is what we have been doing with, uh, with the radar imagery. For the private sector, because we don't have any information about age, not even a species, we need to classify a species using optical data, and then we can use a height directly derived from, from LIDAR as a way of estimating other variables of, of, uh, of relevance, okay? Like a basal area or volume. When we have a... a information, uh, very detailed information, we can estimate uh, individual trees. So we can delineate individual tree canopies and locate those canopies in X and Y and classify, well, to do the volume estimate and so on and so forth with that, okay? Also, we can use models to do projections. But what is important, and I would like to conclude with that, I'm not going to extend more is the possibility that, uh, I mean, using LIDAR is, uh, is measuring the forest canopy from above. We don't know very much about the, the, the stems, okay? We don't know anything or very little, or, or we got a partial information about what is underneath. So by combining LIDAR capabilities, so the, the kind of point clouds you can generate from drones with a terrestrial laser scanner, you can create very accurate models in 3D of every tree in there, or most of the trees in there. It's not perfect yet, okay? So once you've got that, you can estimate other products like the stem profiles, which is uh, related to timber quality. 
and that is a very piece of information, especially for the forest industry. But also, is, it gives us some feedback about the way we are managing our forests and the way we should be doing that, because we will have a lot of samples in, the, in, the, in our forest, okay? Just to conclude, uh, well, the kind of work we're doing with, uh, with uh, LIDAR is to estimate uh, the volume of uh, hedgerows, and uh, then we can estimate the biomass from there. And finally, finally, this is, this is the end, we are trying to develop our own capabilities to, to monitor LIDAR in, uh, in our forest districts. So we are partnering with, uh, with a company. We're trying to fly beyond the visual line of sight. So that will give us the capability to cover large parts of, lar large parts of a forest district, if not the whole entire forest district, in one go, just by flying these, these, uh, these drones at will. Okay? That's it. Okay. Thank you very much.